Greetings and salutations. Welcome back to another BA Sensei video. It's me, James. What we're going to be looking at today is Power Query once again. And this time around, we're going to look at processing multiple folders with multiple files inside of it, all in one Power Query script. Okay, cool. So what are we looking at here? So let's say we got, um, we're an investment manager and we got data coming from different asset managers and they're all in different folders. Each one of their folders contain their portfolios. And in a portfolio file, you will basically have um, the sheets that will indicate the months and then the actual content of the stocks held for each month for that portfolio, for that manager. So now the big requirement is how do I get all of this stuff together in one Power Query script from all of these folders? Okay, so I'm going to show you some cool stuff. I'm going to show you some really cool magic in Power Query. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to start off with um, we're going to start off with a blank Excel sheet. So our blank Excel sheet, let's start with a blank Excel. Here we go. Open it up. First thing we do is we connect to one of the sheets. We say from file from Excel workbook. Okay. Then we say cool. Where is it? It is over there. And we're going to connect to asset managers. Pick any of the files. One of the assumptions here is that all the files are the same format. Okay, cool. So let's say we look at portfolio one. Look at that. Quickly import it. Cool. Let's pick anyone. Let's pick Jan and we say transform data. Just randomly select one of those. What we're going to do is let's be, let's quickly transform the data. I know I don't want that turtle in, so I'm just going to quickly add the text filters. Say so it does not contain total and that's beautiful okay we make that number we make let's add another column let's, let's add a column for the holdings holdings which is basically just the quantity times the price of each stock cool so now you can see for this portfolio we selected we got the stock code the quantity the price and the total holdings let's just convert this to uh, this number okay cool so now this is pretty this is pretty cool, but we want to apply this across all of the files across all of those folders. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a little function. So we're going to go to home, we say advanced editor, and we're going to create a function. Let's call this um, I'm going to call this input table. So I opened the advanced editor over there, and I'm just going to add a little. That's how you do a variable. And I'm just going to take because. We, not, we don't want to hard code the, the file anymore, and we don't want to hard code the sheet. So I'm going to remove all of that, delete all of that, and I'm just going to take the input table. And the next step here is where we, the very first step after we selected the, the file and we took the sheet, I'm just going to take where the sheet name is that. I'm just going to replace that with the actual variable. Okay, that's going to be the input. Cool. And we say, okay, so now we've created our first function. Let's call this function um, uh, holding sheet clean, just to give it, idea, uh, to give it some context. Okay, that's cool. So now we have a little function that will actually clean any sheet that comes into it. Next thing, let's go to the folder. We say new query. We say file from folder. And I'm just going to go into where the folders are, and I'm just going to say take this folder over there. So what it's going to do, it's going to connect to the folders, and we say transform data. Beautiful. We're also going to make a little function out of this. So first of all, there are two files in there. I don't care about any of that information. I'm just going to keep the content and the name and say remove all the other columns. Okay, so first of all, this is, let's call this the... Uh, let's first strip out that XLSX. I don't need that. We go to transform. We say extract. We say uh, for the delimiter, and the delimiter is dot. Yeah, this dot. Here we go. So portfolio. We call this. Let's call this the um, workbook name. Okay, and we can see that's the actual portfolio name, portfolio name, just so we can keep track of it. So you see in this binary thing, what this binary is, it's the actual Excel file. That is the actual Excel file. So 
what we're going to do now is we're going to add a new column. Let's say we're going to add a custom column. And we're going to try and read that from. Let's call this an Excel object. We're going to extract the Excel objects out of this that thing over there. So we're going to say, excellent. Let's say Excel. I don't have my auto fill in book uh, on. So I'm just going to type it in. And I want to take the content to go in there. And I'm just going to put in false. That second argument is for promoting the header. So I'm going to say false. I'm going to say nice. You can see now it actually it's going to return a table. So I don't need that content anymore. So I can take that out. So the next step is what are we going to extract out of that? We're not actually interested in any of that stuff. We're just interested in two things, the name and the data we say. Excellent. Cool. So here we actually have the sheet name. So we, let's call this the sheet name. And this is the, let's call this is the holding date. That's where that is from. So this is each of the sheets for each one of those portfolios. But we don't actually just want to open a data because we've already written a function that will clean those objects. So what we're going to do is we're going to add, we're going to invoke a custom function. That custom function is our original holding clean. So we can say custom, yes. What we're going to, we're going to call our custom function and we're going to send it the data. And it's going to, we can take that data away now. And we're going to expand that data and we're going to say bring back everything that we did with our first function, yes. And now we actually have our holdings and everything in that. Isn't that cool? That is just too cool. So let's quickly convert this to um, convert this to decimal numbers. Cool. And we can actually convert this one into just gonna make this date. Excellent. Okay, so what we're going to do next is now that we can extract everything from from a workbook in a sheet, let's go to let's make a function out of this as well. So now we go into advanced editor. Cool. And what we're going to say is, um, let's call this the folder. And we are basically going to replace everything in our folder. Let's say our um, asset manager folder. I'm going to take that folder. We're going to replace because we don't want to hard code this anymore. So we're just going to take everything in this very first step that actually selects the folder. We don't want to hard code that. We're just going to give it dynamically the folder location. And I just want to take bring your uh, attention here because the the important thing is this custom. Um, function we're calling with the previous steps we we done. So we're going to call a custom function within a custom function. Isn't that awesome? And I'm going to say cool. We're going to call this the um, folder clean. Okay, cool. So now that's cool. So now we have two custom functions, but we want to now read from every single folder. We want to read from every single one of these folders. Um, dynamically and we don't we don't want to do it in many queries. we don't want to do it in one query so what we're going to do is we're quickly going to head on back to power query I am going to create uh, a couple of things um, asset manager I'm just going to create a table here and we're going to say what is the path and I'm going to say asset manager one which is asset manager one Asset Manager 2, Asset Manager 3, yeah? Okay, cool, and I'm going to insert the path. I'm just going to paste the path in here. Those are the three locations where my Asset Manager dates would be, if you can see there, there's the... And it can be on any location. You can have that be on the internet. You can have it on the K drive, share drive. It can be wherever you want it to be. So let's quickly convert this into a table. That's the only input we need from this table to sh show us what location does it come from. Let's quickly give this table a name. Let's call this the path table. Let's call it actually asset manager path table. Okay, cool. Let's just pull this into Power Query. Okay. So now what we're going to do is quite simply, we are going to now invoke, now that we have this path, I'm going to send this path to our folder clean. So I'm going to say add column, invoke a custom function, and we're going to invoke 
our folder clean and we're going to use our path to go into there and we're going to say go and you can see now it's going to return a table okay cool so what we can do is so first of all if i didn't have the asset manager here, let's say i wanted to extract from the folder name that asset manager there what i could do as i can say go to transform uh, extract after delimiter so i did that incorrectly and we're going to say advanced end there we go uh, path and asset manager name cool now we have that next up now because we're invoking a custom function we have all of our stuff in there we can just say that i want that to be clicked let's say that cool and let's quickly convert this to date date let's make all of this decimal now we can bring it all back into power query so now what we basically have in excel we have scraped all of those folders and we basically used two custom functions and brought it all back in one actual script okay so now you can do cool things with this you can put it into its pivot table you can say okay cool i want to see my asset manager name see my portfolio name i want to see the holding date and i want to see the stock code cool and then we can bring in the holdings and the quantity so now you have a nice breakdown of all those sheets with the simple query you can actually say what each asset manager is holding what portfolio for what date isn't that glorious i hope this really helped you because this this is will give you a insight into using custom um, functions to get closer to your data excellent ba sensei out